Kanye West is one of the most influential artists of this generation. With worldwide chart-topping influential and highly regarded albums like College Dropout, Late Registration, Graduation, 808s, Dark Twisted Fantasy, Yeezus, and T-Lop, these all helped develop Kanye's ego, along with his producing, along with fashion businesses, and rightfully so, but to an extent. And as we all know, whether you're a Kanye fan or not, this ego tends to get him into hot water more often than not. We don't even know what he pays his PR team for at this point. But with almost 30 years of your career being in the spotlight, things are bound to happen. Recently, James Blake tweeted about artists being paid more for the amount of streams they get via music streaming sites as well as their other music being used on Reels, TikTok, and various other platforms. It's fair to say that most people would agree with this statement, especially when it's regarding their favorite artists, even more so when it's a smaller artist. But the caveat is Kanye is agreeing with it, and that goes somewhere sometimes. It's much more of a right message, wrong messenger situation. If you're familiar with Kanye, which I assume you are if you're watching this video, he is one of the biggest hypocrites in music and liars as well. Completely ignoring all of his religious phases from Jesus is King to now, he acts like he's a super moral figure in music that wants to do right by every artist, but flash forward, he's not. Let's get into it. Kanye West founded Good Music in 2004 after the success of College Dropout via a joint venture with Sony. Good Music stands for Getting Out Our Dreams, a label meant for serious creatives doing whatever they can to make it. Starving artists that put in the work and looking for the music to be pushed beyond the local level since back then of course streaming didn't exist and you had to actually buy physical albums. Historic, right? Some important moments in the label are him meeting Kid Cudi and signing him four years later, Common's sixth album releasing through the label, meeting Big Sean in 2005 to later sign him two years later, John Legend's second album releasing through the label, the release of Cruel Summer, signing Sahai the Prince, another great artist, Travis Scott is a producer, 070 Shake, another great artist, John Legend, Pusha T, Tiana Taylor, Q-Tip, Casey Hill, and Designer back in the 2016 era. Once again, completely ignoring all the other unfortunate things he did to certain label members like Big Sean, 070 Shake, and especially Tiana Taylor. The main issue is what he said about Masters, specifically that I'm giving all good music artists the 50% share I have of their Masters. After going on another rant back in 2019 and 2020 about how significant it is for artists to own their masters. In his words, he says, when you sign a music deal, you sign away your rights. Without the masters, you can't do anything with your own music. Someone else controls where it's played and when it's played. Artists have nothing except the fame, touring, and merch. The desired effect will only be achieved when every artist owns their masters. I'm team free artists. I'm committed to doing whatever is necessary so artists own their copyrights. And you can kind of see why a lot of people got annoyed when he said that. Like he's so concerned about the starving artists that always gets mistreated by labels and treated like shit. You're literally the equivalent of a human label. You talk all this, but you do nothing about it. And now, back to the recent news with James Blake, who I completely agree with, specifically for quality music. Now if you're not familiar with James Blake, his music is phenomenal and he's highly regarded in music. Now, while his solo music is also really great and enjoyable, personally, I believe he shines the most on these cinematic-esque songs that would be background music in a really important blockbuster movie scene in songs like Till For The Notice, Stop Trying To Be God, Godspeed, and a bunch of others. Say I'm gonna get pregnant from all the writing I'm doing on James right now, but you know, he's one of those artists that has a discography of all bangers. You can't genuinely name one bad song by the dude. And all of these specifically back up his point. All of this costs, whether you need to have it in orchestra to perform, record that, pay the engineers, producers, executive producers, writers, session musicians, composers, music arrangers, and other jobs. Not even including rewrites, songs being scrapped and never touched again, to stay completely hidden in someone's hard drive, different takes of the song, and everything in between. Now. Let's take a bit of a look at the payments that he's talking about. The main places where music streaming takes place are Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and YouTube Music. There are obviously more than these, but looking at these helps us get the best idea for the revenue that they're making. Apple Music pays about 0.0056 cents per stream, which is still higher than most other platforms, usually the favorite among most artists. YouTube Music is about 0.0002 per stream. 
YouTube is about 0.00164 per stream, but then you also have to factor in that song being claimed and copyrighted in videos, cough cough, some of mine, along with some of them having music videos, some just having audio only, and some of them being uploaded to uh, different types of music channels for them. And lastly, we have Spotify paying about 0.004 per stream. Now, while a lot of artists shit on Spotify, somewhat kinda understandably a little bit, it's especially worth it for smaller and mid-sized artists, specifically with their playlisting, via rap caviar, most necessary get turned, various regional playlists like State of Mind for New York rappers, CST for rappers from the Midwest, Teen Beats for pop, New Boots for country, and so forth. It's kind of a similar thing to YouTube where if you're a creator, you kind of can't really get mad too much about the, the cut that they take as well because you're basically paying for the algorithm. Without them, there is nothing pretty much. And your videos won't get pushed as much, nobody else is gonna see them unless you came over to them from a different platform. So unless you're someone like Travis Scott, Kanye, Drake, Taylor Swift, or The Weeknd, you're not gonna particularly care about the playlisting part because you basically edge to 100 million streams on a song. You can get multiple of those off one album. But the beauty about Spotify is once again in the playlisting and push, similar to SoundCloud. More on that in a minute. So, so let's, let's take a song with a massive amount of streams and compare it to a bit more of an average song that's been out for a few years. Let's do Starboard by The Weeknd and Sad For What by Eric Doa. One of my favorite songs by him. Do not go check him out right now. He did not drop an album like three to four weeks ago. Do not go listen to that and stream it at all. Shout out my nigga Eric. Sad For What is currently sitting at about 12,619,229 Spotify streams. And since Apple Music wants to be a dickhead and not show me the amount of streams a song has without paying for their membership, We'll be generous and kind of estimate the amount of streams a bit. So doing some simple math, you know, we see that Spotify has about 226 million monthly active premium listeners worldwide, while Apple Music only has about 101 million monthly premium users. So in order to translate the Spotify streams to Apple Music streams and make it kind of a fair estimate, we'll just divide the Spotify amount by the Apple Music amount and get 44.69% which means the Apple Music equivalent is about 5,639,533, 2 million on YouTube Music, and 1 million on YouTube, also kind of ignoring ad block and stuff, which also messes with revenue. Which brings us to about 84,426 gross income from that. Once again, completely ignoring ad block, his whatever deal he has with this record label, and all that other stuff as well. This is just an estimate. And using the same the same stuff, the estimated revenue for Starboy is about 12,205,417. So now that we painted a bit more of a full picture, no Kodak Black, of streaming payouts, not including whatever distribution deal, record deal, or whatever else they have, we can continue the conversation from where James and Kanye left off. It also helps a bit more when you think about these numbers in terms of your favorite artists, pocket watch your streaming money because obviously a small artist is not gonna be making the same amount as a large artist at all. So putting this into perspective, the cost of My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, one of the greatest albums of all time, being released in the streaming era versus physical and digital album purchases, the amount of streams needed to recoup would have been absolutely insane. Now from the other perspective, that amount of production clearly isn't the average. The average would obviously be something like Austin by Dasha, You Proof by Morgan Wallen, which has some vocals and audio engineer, someone playing guitar, some claps and other stuff, along with like a normal beat. Now as Kanye co-signs this, it's basically like Paula Dean telling PewDiePie to not use racial slurs. Right message, wrong person. Kanye has no right to throw stones at labels when he does the exact same shit to all of his artists. Whenever he doesn't get his way, he has to cry and throw a fit. But whenever he does something wrong, it's fuck you. I'm Kanye. Find God. You're exiled. He literally acts like a parent that doesn't believe in apologizing or ever being wrong. Or basically just being a girlfriend. He shouldn't be yapping any of this until he fully fixes all of the artist's careers that he's messed up. Whether it's through never releasing their album, delaying their album too much, stealing their money, Big Sean, or whatever else. Personally, I think it'd be a bit more fair to massive artists that don't necessarily need your algorithm and playlisting. Maybe they get a slightly bigger cut than smaller and medium-sized artists. Kind of like maybe what Twitch does. 
But, you know, what do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comments. If you like high quality video essays about music, feel free to check out my other videos. I'd like to expand to talking about more music things besides just rap. But, you know, we'll see how that goes. Thank you. Have a good day. If my girl was a worm, I would wrap her around my penis. And you know how worms got that natural, like, lubrication? I would just start stroking with her.